How are we doing, everybody? Brent Swanson with Midwest Muscle Report with part three with IFBB Pro Brian Yurski getting ready tomorrow to do battle in the Toronto Pro. Brian, give us some updates, buddy. How are we doing? Ah, uh, shit. We're right on course, man. Nothing could be better. So we've been uh, pounding the food every two and a half hours, um, keeping the fluid in all day today, so everything is digesting well. Um, we had a little bit of slowdown digestively mid-afternoon with some of the you know, the, the amounts of rice, but uh, picked that back up with some black coffee and it, you know, pushed everything back through and we're uh, rolling full steam ahead. we got one more meal before I shut things down tonight and uh, wake up. At least I can probably get four to five meals in before pre-judging, which is going to be awesome. And like, we're, we're all in. Awesome. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, from the first check-ins that we did yesterday to now, I can tell that you're definitely drying <laughs> out because that face looks like Skeletor right now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can... <laughs> I can feel it, too. I mean, you can just feel the skin starting to wrap around the muscle, so. Yeah. Now, how have you been, um, you know, we, we've talked and you mentioned a few times about uh, keeping your water pretty high until the yeah. very end, you know, and a lot of competitors, you know, some do, some end up cutting their water, um, and then some end up getting into trouble with cutting their water too early, right. with diuretic right, right. use and everything. Right. Um, kind of tell us your mindset on keeping the water in and, you know, how that just kind of works for you. Yeah, I'm uh, like you were saying in the previous episodes. Even four, six weeks out, you could tell that we had that hard, that hardened look, and uh, we were, you know, dry, vascular, and hard. And that's with two to three gallons of water a day. Um, so once you, once your body's acclimated to that, I mean, granted, you can, you know, use water manipulation without a diuretic at that point, which is safe. But if you're trying to drop water and use diuretic, I mean, that's where those guys get into trouble as far as flattening out. But we're going to uh, keep the water in. We're at two gallons thus far. Um, the last, you know, since New York, we've been at two gallons a day. We're going to finish off. Probably got 20 ounces left for tonight. And then uh, we'll shut things down this evening and probably just sip four to six ounces, maybe get eight ounces in first thing with my breakfast meal. But it's a, it's oats, so there's you know, a decent amount of water with my oatmeal. And then uh, after that, it's just four to six ounces per meal, maybe a sip in between meals, you know, just to keep your mouth wet. But uh, nothing extreme, like, you know, nothing nothing real extreme as far as completely pulling it where, you know, you're, you're completely dried out as far as, uh, you know, dry mouth and that. But uh, everything, like I said, once you, you get the ball rolling in that direction, your body's acclimated to that, then you don't have to do much. <clears throat> right. And as we said before... Uh, you're the type of competitor, too, that you're not doing any junk loading or anything like that. The right. same carbs that you've been eating all prep, you know, you're right. continuing to eat and fill up on. So a lot of times, um, you know, without, since you're not having the junk, you're not risking spilling over, keeping the water. And all yeah. you're doing is just keeping, you know, your your muscle bellies full. Right. And that's the thing, like I said, I you know, the last couple of days I've been just judging the carbs. We know how much carbs we have to get in for the day um, and per meal, but... I said, if you're you're finishing that your say the current meal you're on, and you feel stuff just slowing down and binding up, then there's no sense of force feeding yourself when you can let it let it work through. You know, 45 minutes to an hour later, finish the balance of that meal because, like I said, you're not you're not trying to uh, overcompensate, but you still want your digestive system to be uh, functioning. So, I said we had a slight not an issue, but we had slight slowdown mid mid afternoon. I just backed up a little bit. Once things started processing again, I finished that meal and then, you know, got my white potato in and everything's been smooth sailing since. So. <clears throat> right. Now, um, I know we talked about this uh, off, off camera and just as we've been yeah. talking as friends, but um, just so everybody kind of knows, you took a two-year layoff between these shows and the last shows. Um, can you give us a little bit of insight into that? Uh, uh, yeah, we did uh, Chicago 2014 as the pro debut. Like I said, we... We were flying high off the of Nationals. Uh, a lot of insight was that we should have done a, a show right then after Nationals, which, you know, you're, at the, you're in November. There really wasn't much going on. I don't even know if the Lou Ferrigno show was on the calendar that year. So you, you still would have had to shut down, you know, instead of jumping right into a pro show. But then, so if you do shut down, you might as well take some of 2013 and then proof. Well, needless to say, we thought we needed the whole year. Some people disagree. Um, I said, in hindsight, it worked out for the best because my daughter was one and I was able to spend some quality time raising her. But uh, so we did come into Chicago Pro. Quite a humbling experience. Like I said, we uh, 
came off the national win thinking we were going to be competitive. And we could have been if we had that hardened, dry national look. Wow, we just missed the mark. All right, so then that puts us into the, you know this current two-year layoff where it was just a matter of getting my head right, to be honest. Um, you know, coming off of that Chicago win at, or Chicago debut, it's like, am I, can I compete at this level? Can I not compete at this level? Was my heart in it? Was I not in it? You know, with a little one at home, you're starting to weigh priorities. Um, and needless to say, we wanted to try to conceive a second child. So that that played into the off season, trying to get all that, you know, on the up and up. Um, so once we knew, once we had, once we were expecting the second one, um, we knew it was time to uh, go all in, started training heavy again. Took a while to get the mind right as far as to be competitive and just, you know, motivated. And then uh, found the spark. It just came. You know, you, you fight it, you fight it, you keep going to the gym on those days you don't want to go. And ultimately, those are the days that separate you because you could very easily stay home and just, you know, skip out. But we pushed through. It, the way that the love of the sport faded, it came right back. And then, uh, like, it's been balls of the wall training since. So, And then definitely after the New York showing, you know, I feel I can compete, um, motivated more than ever. We're going to go in here, hopefully, you know, shooting for the first call out top five, you know, and uh, see what happens. That's really refreshing to hear you say that because a lot of people think, oh, once you turn, once you become an IFBB pro, everything's rosy, you're on top of the world. <laughs> You know, you Quite don't have the opposite. Yeah, Stay you, in you, yeah, Stay yeah, in. yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't have any issues <clears throat> and everything like that. But I mean, it, it, it's just very great to hear that part of your life, just because you know there is life outside of bodybuilding and yeah. balancing that, and then having kids, and then on top of that, you know, just saying to yourself, you know, I want to get better, and when I come back, I want to make an impact because you're already a great bodybuilder, and the yeah. time off has definitely served you justice. And yeah, I mean, you, you look you look really great, and like I said, you're shooting for a top five call out in a pro show, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of pros they turn pro, you never hear from them just because they can't compete at that next level. And you've right. definitely shown that you deserve to be there, and you're gonna you're gonna make some noise. So that's great. Yeah, well, yeah, it all boils down to that freaking. Here we go with this segment, Midwest muscle. You know, where it's that stubborn blue collar, don't take shit. You know, work for what you want and. You know, there you have it. So, yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> now, now, kind of tell us, um, like we said, the show's tomorrow night. Um, yeah. So, what are some things that you're going to do tomorrow as far as food or as far as sleep or as far as stretching, posing? Uh, what, what kind of your rituals um, as you're getting ready for the show? Yeah, we're going to uh, stare at the clock all night and wait for 5.30 oatmeal <laughs> for sure. Um, no, we're going to get that first meal in. Probably crash out, like I said, I get that heavy amount of oats in me, and uh, it's lights out for 45 minutes, probably. And then uh, we just get up, get the blood moving again, get, you know, get moving around, probably walk a little bit, just, you know, nothing, nothing substantial, but just get the body moving, get the blood moving. Um, maybe not so much, you know, as far as stretching, per se, but, you know, posing, a lot of, you know, posing between meals, getting the nutrients into the muscle, um, we're on point, like I said, time-wise, probably being on stage at seven, which puts me five meals in and, you know, my fifth meal would be at five thirty. So that's, you know, that's damn near perfect. Gives me an hour and a half post meal to, uh, let everything settle down and we'll be on stage and then I'll probably just pick between, uh, that prejudging and then that probably that 10 o'clock window when we, uh, were, uh, presented awards. So, right. Now, is there anything when you're backstage, do you do anything different than most competitors? Are you somebody who's laying down with your feet up? Or are you nah, somebody... Fuck that. Uh, nah, I mean, that's, if I'm going to be laying around, I'm going to stay in my room and you tell me when to come down. I'm not going to go down there and camp out. And, I mean, I, I don't know what the hell they're trying to accomplish there. I mean, I understand you don't want water retention on your... But, I mean, if you got your fucking feet up... Dry. Yeah, if you got your feet up a half hour before you go on stage, I don't, I don't know what the fuck, but... Um, we're just back there trying to get the blood. Like I said, I got those, def not deficient areas, but the areas that need more blood than others. And, uh, just try to pump as much blood into those areas and, uh, fuck you, ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> Great. Well, um, I'm going to let you go here, brother, and get some good rest tonight. And hopefully tomorrow, if you have some time, we're going to talk, uh, yeah. before you leave and go to prejudging. 
and the night show, and then we'll do a post uh, show afterwards. Uh, just we'll to do see a post show with my big ass cardboard uh, Happy Gilmore check. Exactly, and then you got to bring a meal too. You got to eat in front of the camera. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good, bro. All right, hey, have a good night's sleep. You we're hoping that you get some rest, and we're just okay. excited for tomorrow, man. So, yeah, likewise, really appreciate it. All right, thanks, Brian. This is part three. Brent Swanson, Brian Yersky, and we'll talk to.